I'm Scott Allen Miller, and this is my life living in Latin America as an immigrant, as an expat, and I'm here to continue our series on helping build expat and relocation skills and approaches and processes to help make you be successful at becoming an expat. Today, we're going to be talking about the importance of separating your travel with your relocation investigation experiences, because this is a place where people often make a really big mistake that they don't realize and put themselves on a path for perhaps not achieving the success that they hope for. So let's get to that right after the bump. Let's just lead off with an example that should explain exactly what I'm talking about. So you're heading out to Cancun, Mexico, and you want to be able to go and, and get a feel for what it's like. You're really interested in what the options are going to be there. So you fly into the city of Cancun, you go out to the resorts, and you have a wonderful all-inclusive experience on the uh, Costa Maya, on the Mayan Riviera there in Mexico. It is beautiful, the food is excellent, you have a great time, and you decide that maybe Mexico is the place for you. Well, that could be, but there's a bunch of things we need to consider. Those all-inclusive resorts are nothing like normal Mexican life. A normal Mexican would never be in an all-inclusive resort. I mean, they might for a weekend here or there every couple of years, but it's not a normal activity and in no way reflects Mexican life or food or culture, the rate at which people speak English, or anything else. Really, you're not experiencing Mexico in any way, and in fact, the point of the all-inclusive resorts is often to avoid Mexico. So if you like the resorts, you may be learning that what you don't like is Mexico, because that's specifically what they're there to get you away from. Now, most people know that using a resort as a way to compare living in a place is not something you do. We don't go to Disney World or or Universal Studios and think that being inside the park is what it's like being a resident in Orlando, Florida. Generally, we're good at knowing this. But when we back that off just a little bit and look at more traditional travel instead of inclusive resort travel, you start to blur the lines. And this is where things get dangerous. Uh, if you're going to, for example, Costa Rica, which is a popular destination, it is really easy to go out to the Nicoya Peninsula or other coastal areas or to go to touristy parts of San Jose, the capital. And while you may be in places where you are commingling with locals, both expats who've lived there long term and Costa Ricans, Ticos who have been there uh, their whole lives, uh, you're probably still getting a skewed experience. You're probably going out to eat a lot at fancier restaurants and more expensive restaurants and more touristy focused restaurants. You're probably staying in a hotel or an Airbnb where things are catering to you to some degree. Man, you're probably in a spot that's more tourist oriented than a normal neighborhood. You will likely do activities such as laying out on the beach or going to a museum that when you are at home, you probably do relatively infrequently, if ever. I lived in Dallas, Texas for a really long time, and the number of times that I went to the museum there in town was practically zero. But the number of times that I went to while living in Dallas, the Acropolis, <laughs> Acropolis Museum in Athens, Greece, was more than I went to all museums in Dallas. That's an important perspective. And I went to zoos in Europe probably as much as I went to zoos in Dallas, even though I did go to do zoos in Dallas to some degree. I went to them other places just as much. So when I'm traveling, I have a tendency, as everyone does, to do certain activities a whole lot more and spend a lot less time in the home. And this is absolutely natural and to be expected. This isn't wrong in any way. When you're traveling, you're there to see the place that you're in. But when you're home, you're focused on your day-to-day -day life and you have to curtail your spending in most cases. It just makes sense. So for example, your home, when you're living there, when I had my home in Dallas for a number of years, I had my computers, my television, my, my video games, my movies, my projects, my fixing the house stuff. Mostly that wasn't me. I'm not very handy. But all those things are there for me to do. It's my house. I've got, I've got regular life to deal with. But when I'm traveling, I don't have access to any of those things. And I have all these things outside the place that I'm staying that I need to deal with. I need to see the museums and things that I won't have access to again in the future or maybe not for a while until I return. So the reason that we do things day to day completely different. And of course, as a traveler, you expect that rarely will you have a fridge stocked with food. You're not going to cook for yourself. It makes no sense. It's not even financially viable. But when you live in a place, you need to have snacks in your fridge because you don't want to have to go out to a restaurant every single time you want to eat. And so the approach to absolutely everything changes. When we are 
planning to become expats or we're considering the possibility perhaps, it is tempting to go out and use either our pre-existing travel experiences as a basis for determining where we want to go. This is dangerous because, for example, you might have gone to Mexico and only spent time in an all-inclusive resort, or you may have gone to Panama and rented an expensive place on the beach, or you may have gone to Paris and stayed in the Latin Quarter. In all these cases, you're not experiencing what normal life is like in these places at all. You're in a place with very few locals, a place that caters to tourists, and you, your experience as far as the cost of things, the ease of dealing with stuff, all of that is skewed. And sometimes it's skewed good, sometimes it's skewed bad. But when you're trying to relocate, the only thing you care about is accuracy, not the good or the bad. Of course, you want to find a place that's good, but the investigation process only cares about accuracy. If it's not accurate, your investigation is harming you rather than helping you. When you're in travel mode, you're often very excited. And this is something that you have to mentally just get over because trying to relocate somewhere or investigating for relocation is a very logical process, you hope. And it's important to keep it that way. But it, when you're in a new country and you're thinking about the dreaming about the possibility of moving to it and what your life might be like there, it's very easy to get very excited. And when you do that, you're going to paint a rosy picture of that place in most cases, and it's dangerous. But it's also possible that when you move to a place and you go to travel-based uh, locations, you go to touristy locations, you may get a... a feeling that's very strange, right? Like, uh, oh, everything's so expensive. I was expecting this to be cheaper than where I came from. Well, it probably is, maybe not, but it easily could be. But you're going to restaurants when you normally would cook at home. You're going to expensive supermarkets instead of the affordable supermarkets because they're what caters to the tourists. They're what's easy and accessible and visible. So it's a different thing. Or you're looking at neighborhoods that really are just used by Airbnb. Uh, for example, here I live in Leon, Nicaragua, and most tourists who come here and investigate the city are only staying for a few days and they tend to stay in El Centro. And so almost all of the housing that's available in El Centro is designated for Airbnb, hotels, and similar. And so the per night cost is very high. But if you go out into the barrios, into the regular neighborhoods of the city, that could be very close to downtown, but just outside that traditional colonial central area, then suddenly the prices plummet and the cost of electricity goes down, the cost of food goes down, the cost of rent could be a tenth as much. It's a completely different thing. It's a very small area that's super expensive, but as a tourist, that's basically the only place you'll ever go. And for good reasons, as a tourist, that's where you should go most of the time. But if you're coming to learn what it's like to live in the city, unless you are really dedicated to living right in the center of the city and paying those really high prices and dealing with being surrounded by tourists all the time, it's probably not the place you actually want to investigate. You want to stay in one of the barrios, get a little bit outside the city center, and find out as best you can what real life would be like in the city. It's not indicative if you don't do that because normal people who live here aren't in the middle of the Airbnbs and hotels. That's not how people live more or less anywhere in the world. That's a little bit strange. It is nice when you have places where you can do that. They are few and far between. Some places have no tourist zone at all, and that's how they kind of get away from it. But as long as you have a tourist zone, and that's typically what's going to happen is you're only going to go visit places with the tourist zones because you are a tourist in some way. So it's difficult to get off the beaten path. But when you are investigating a new place, you really want to make a, an effort in two ways. One is the physical effort. You want to go out and attempt to go to places, do activities and and so forth that are indicative of what life might be like. You want to stay in a real community. You want to go to communities that you might actually consider living in. And I understand that you may not know where you want to live, and so it's important to hit lots of different places and explore in that way. That is absolutely true. But be aware when you're going to a tourist destination versus a standard destination, right? And, and tourist destinations normally are few and far between, but they're almost always where tourists go. If you're looking for where hotels are and there's clumps of them, that should more or less give it away. So. Yes, it's a lot more work to get away from that stuff, but it's super important when you're investigating becoming an expat. So from a physical perspective, you want to try to eat at low-cost places. You want to eat at local places. Go to places where the locals are going, not where any tourist goes. Look for the least touristy places you can find. Uh, try cooking for yourself at home. Go to the supermarket for sure. Go to multiple markets. See what shopping is like. Um, here in Nicaragua, as an example, we have local markets. like They sell fruit and vegetables out on the street. We tend to, if you're going to be shopping like in Nicaraguan, you're going to get meat from a carniceria, like a butcher shop. You're going to get bread from a panaderia, a bakery. Um, you're going to get uh, most of your stuff uh, beyond that from like a pali or maxi pali, which is like a tiny local uh, supermarket chain. It is technically part of Walmart, but it is uh, very small and they, they deal with the food that Nicaraguans eat every day. Uh, and then 
yes, if you need to get specialty stuff, we go to La Colonia and La Union, which are much more expensive. And those are places that uh, it's important to know what they're like, but it's also important to understand that most Nicaraguans would only use them sparingly. And so you need to kind of have this feel of what would your daily shopping be like? And then of course, what are the options for items you can't get there so you can do some gauging? Whenever I've lived anywhere in the world, this is actually some of the most fun things to do as someone who's looking to relocate. It's an opportunity to really get to know what everyday life is like and see what the culture is like and the, the everyday experiences. I find it really rewarding. I just love getting to a new place and heading out to their grocery stores and doing some real shopping, stocking my fridge, trying to cook at home. Um, I find that it's, it's one of those places that it's very difficult to make it overly touristy. Now, I just said that there are supermarkets that cater to the tourist, and that is absolutely true, but it's very easy to figure out where the local markets are, where alternative uh, grocery stores are, and to experiment with that. Now, of course, if you're going to Europe, people tend to shop in the big supermarkets. That's the trend, other than fruit and veg that get delivered to you in many cases. Here in Nicaragua, you have these tiers. Very few Nicaraguans go to the expensive supermarkets, so it's easy to find places like the Pali. They're everywhere, and that's where everybody goes, so just ask around. Generally, you can find this pretty easily. The second part is keeping mentally focused on being in expat mode, not in travel mode. Physically, you can make yourself go to the right places, avoid going to museums, avoid going and laying out on the beach, and unless you're literally looking at living on the beach, then okay, uh, don't go to uh, uh, all, the, all the specialty places, the restaurants that are only catering to tourists. And so just avoid those things, and that will help. Stay in the barrio, not in the city center. That will help. But mental, you also need to put yourself in a place where you're not in a place to go be on vacation. You have to you have to kind of disconnect. And this is very difficult. The first part is easy. The second part is hard. You have to get yourself out of travel mode and don't be necessarily excited about just being in a new country and being like, oh, I discovered this new place. It's absolutely amazing. And, I, and then I'm thinking of it as I'm so relaxed and I'm away from home, and I'm, which of course you are. So it's very, very easy to get drawn into that travel mindset because why not? And it's fun and it's great. But you want to be focused on what would my life be like if I was here every day and, and really try to see everything in that context. So when you do go out to eat, think, okay, this is what a restaurant would be like. Would this be a restaurant I would go to every day? How do these prices compare for every day? How do uh, the food selection, how is this? Is this going to meet my needs every day? If I'm cooking at home five days a week, is this good for two days a week out? Or maybe I like to eat out almost every day. Would, is there enough variety, right? Everything you do, trying to make sure that those activities are everyday activities as best as you can. If you can, even consider doing things like watching TV, playing video games, or whatever it is you would do. Go out and maybe hit the casino or uh, go out to dinner, but go to regular places, not the special occasion places. See what nightlife is like. Do you like the way here in Nicaragua? It is a big thing to go out and listen to live music many nights of the week. Is that something you would enjoy? Is that something you need to work around? Are activities that you are going to want to do available? Seek them out. Spend some time doing normal tasks as much as possible and try to keep yourself from getting completely swept up in being in a go, go, go kind of mode because it is very easy, even when you're focused on relocation tasks, to fill your schedule very full and then keep yourself so occupied that you never have a chance to really stop and think about what life would actually be like. For me, it's a little bit easier because I work so much and I don't take time off when I'm doing these kinds of things that I've still got a laptop with me and I'm sitting down and I'm doing lots of video editing and, and keeping up at the office and doing normal work and trying to get internet and those kinds of things things, no matter what's going on day to day. So it automatically grounds me a little bit and keeps me from being able to run out and just switch into vacation mode at any given moment. I'm always having to find a way to work, but that kind of stuff, something like that, that's going to make you spend some time in an apartment, spend some time actually living in a neighborhood, even if you only have a week, but it allows you to build a little bit of a vision as to what life could be like for you. And of course, if you're not at home, you may not hear the way that things sound. Now, maybe you're not a person who stays home. Maybe you go out almost every night. Not a problem. Then do that. Do the best to replicate what you think your life is going to be like. Of course, accommodate the fact that your life may be different and almost certainly will be when you relocate. Maybe you'll go out more often. Maybe you'll stay home more often. Maybe you'll just find new things that you like to do or find that you've rebalanced your life a little bit. That's realistic. You have to kind of make some allowances for that. But basically, you want to be doing everything you can to replicate living in a country. And when you finally decide in a place to live, then you will 
move there and have plenty of time to do all the vacationing things that you ever want to do. And as soon as you rule out a country, then go out of evaluation mode and go do the vacationing stuff anyway. If you're going to be in Honduras for a month, you spend three weeks, you decide after three weeks, ah, it's just not the right fit for you. The moment you're ruling it out, don't spend your time continuing to live that way. Go and be on vacation and enjoy the touristy stuff. Get it out of the way. Get it out of your system since you're not going to be living there, right? A little bit of this approach will go a long way. So our goal here is to simply help you think and approach when you're visiting countries in a more logical, intentional way. We say this a lot because it's important. So often people are going to countries and not really doing so. They may say, I'm going to go because I want to evaluate it, but then they don't put anything into the evaluation process. They don't go to places they might want to live in. They may not do activities they're actually going to do and immediately start coming away with very misleading information. And it could be in both directions. I know some people who have ruled the country out for a country out for reasons that they should, you know, don't make any sense because those are aren't negatives that would affect them in the real world, uh, and other people who have uh, ruled countries in because they're excited about things that they wouldn't do in the real world, and those both lead to bad results. So we want to get you to good. That is, that is the goal. We want you to be successful. We want you to be able to move to the right place for you and be happy wherever that is, right? I don't know where that's going to be. It's different for everyone. So it's a it's an important process for you to figure out. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe if you'd like to support the channel and the work that we do here. You can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. That sends donations directly to me and helps support everything we do here on the channel. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you all next time.